What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge update. You guys could probably already tell it is going down. Just by that title alone, definitely going to want to see this one as a witness, and he's back at it once more. We've got Fox with the five holes, Harold Ford Jr. battling it out head to head against that Jessica Tarlov, trying to see who's been the most affected by that Trump derangement syndrome, TDS, in this newest update. And I'm going to say he is making a very strong case in this newest update. Excited to get into it. So we're not straight into it, guys. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Before we even get into it, y'all, hit that like button. Also, that subscribe button for you boy without further ado let's jump straight into it folks check this one out okay jesse i mean two weeks left to the election she's taking a day off and she had the, the unmitigated goal to say on friday that donald trump is exhausted and three days later she's taking a day off well she needs a day off to prep for the interview because she didn't prep for brett and she got smoked her team had to throw in the tower and now she has staged Q&As, she has staged town halls. Everyone's trying to help Kamala, and Trump's trying to help you, the voter. And that's the difference. She's not taken seriously. Her saying Trump's not a serious person. Obama doesn't take her seriously. Obama didn't want her. Obama wanted an open primary. The other coup leader, Nancy Pelosi, doesn't take her seriously. She wanted Josh Shapiro. And so Kamala, is the least serious candidate out there. She's known for laughing and not making any sense. And she talks about world leaders who she met fine. Trump's met them all. And they're taking him very seriously. All of these world leaders are now <coughs> scrambling to prepare for Trump's second term. Mm -hmm. There's plants closing in Mexico, preparing for the tariffs. Uh, the EU is already gearing up for a peace summit over Ukraine. Trump spoke to the Wall Street Journal editorial page the other day. And he said, well, China's not going to go into Taiwan because I'm going to hit Xi with a 200 percent tariff. And she would never go in because he knows I'm effing crazy. Yep. <laughs> and that counts for a lot. <laughs> you know, Dana, they're not even hiding it anymore. Maria Shriver actually comes out and says, um, you're not going to be able to answer to ask a question. Unfortunately, we have predetermined questions. Hopefully I'll be able to ask some of the questions that might be in your head. Yes, and they, this is the same group what? that was complaining that Trump's McDonald's event was a staged campaign <laughs> event. Like, okay, come on. Something's happening in the last two days. So mm -hmm. uh, this is, has a taste of 2016 mm -hmm. to me. Um, I heard today that the Kamala Harris people are floating and preparing the misogyny argument for if she loses. This is anecdotal. Um, being off the trail with the last two weeks to go and your closing argument which was about we're not going back, it's exciting, it's joy. Now they're back to old reliable, which is yep. he's dangerous and he's a problem for democracy. The polling shows that's not working. She's not talking about the economy. And now he's stolen all the joy and he's having a good time. And so when you start looking at some of these early vote returns, Republicans are eating into the Democrats' early vote returns. That doesn't mean that there are more Republican votes than Democratic votes in the end, because that just might mean that Republicans decided to vote earlier than they would have on mm -hmm. Election Day. So mm -hmm. caution there. But if you are looking at momentum and who's winning, at the moment, it does feel like Trump is. And I'll add one other thing. There was a reporter yesterday, I can't remember the name, um, from Politico, and they had one story that said, Trump won the day. This is the headline. And the subheadline was, Trump won the day because he showed his trademark capacity to entertain and drive headlines on the campaign trail. We say that all the time, right? So this reporter from Politico got hammered by the left, uh, from all the, all the Obama bros, all the people from the campaign. It reminded me of when Joe Biden used to send out memos demanding more negative coverage about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And to me, mm. if you, it, it just has this feel of if you're winning, you kind of feel like it and you have that wind at your back. To, it seems like to me, she's like in this hard slog and can't figure out what works. You know, um, there is some sound from Ian Sams. Uh, maybe we can hear him, then I'll come back to you, Harold, after the sound. You just I'll take any questions. I'm gonna start with Erica Green of the New York Times. We're going to go to Colleen at the AP. We have time for one more. Andrea at Reuters. Yeah. Okay. I mean, look at her face, though, guys. She is absolute back against the wall. She needed that break. That day off, everyone's hammering her about. She needed that day off because you can see right here, she is just going through it. I'll take any questions. I'm going to start with Erica Green at the New York Times. 
We're gonna go to Colleen at the AP. We have time for one more. Andrea at Reuters. Okay, so the, she says she's ready for questions, and Ian Sams is behind her dictating who she's going to take the questions from. So besides everything being orchestrated, he's even deciding who gets to ask the question. Not her. Wow. Good to be with you. I hope you had a good weekend. I, <laughs> I watched this, and I, I listened to President Trump. The one thing I do agree with him on, uh, with what he was saying a little earlier, was that I do hope uh, that the campaign, the campaign I support, that you can't take a day off between now and the next two weeks. You can't take a down day. You've got to be on the road. You've got to be three or four events a day. And you got Harold Ford has been preaching this. I mean, I feel like he is the one sane Democrat. When he says things like this, like, oh my good, no way she's taking a day, y'all. You can't be doing that now, Colin. We need you. You know, three to four campaign events. We need to be seeing you out in the public's eye. You know, key swing states. No, guys, she is taking the day off, following the trend of old Joe. Because you know. I do hope uh, that the campaign, the campaign I support, that you can't take a day off between now and the next two weeks. You can't take a down day. You've got to be on the road. You got to be three or four events a day, and you got to try to get to two or three states. There's seven states, six states that matter here at the end, and I think that voters want to see the candidates out on both sides. It's a, a, a great American tradition too. This is how candidates close. I, I don't think we can, you can say that you don't think that the close that Vice President Harris is offering is one that is effective and maybe it's not. She thinks she thinks it is. I think she looks at how she got in this race several weeks ago. And remember, before she got in the race, President Biden in the head-to-head -head against President Trump was losing outside of the margin of error in every battleground state. So she's close. And I think to Dana's point, there is a back and forth here. I think you I think the McDonald's I uh, heard, heard some of the commentary around the table over the last few days. I thought that was a brilliant move on the part of President Trump. Uh, mm. It counters and advances, counters some things that have been said about him and advances some things that he wants, that he'd like voters to believe about him in these final days. But I don't think there's anything curious or wrong or for that matter, um, uh, surprising about the fact that uh, Vice President Harris is saying to the country, because I think a lot of people in some of the polling data have said, even supporters of President Trump have said, I'm not sure that I wanted to see an undisciplined Trump over the next four years. There's some people who are fine with it, and that is fine. I don't think it's problematic, though, or, or should that matter be thought of as strange, that she's trying to point out, do you want four more years of the kinds of things you hear from President Trump, even though you may like some of his policies or some of the things that hurt some of the outcomes? Yes, we definitely want four more years of the things we're hearing from Donald. I would way rather want uh, mean tweets, if you're going to call them mean, I feel like they're just, you know, frankly, the truth. We get those mean tweets, uh, lower gas prices, more money in the bank, less money going out to bills. Yes, I would definitely, I'll take that any any day, man. Please give it to us. It's strange that she's trying to point out, do you want four more years of the kinds of things you hear from President Trump, even though you may like some of his policies or some mm -hmm. of the things that some of the outcomes? Do we want to... Uh, have the tweets and have the social media and have yeah. the kind of name calling. Some people may say, I don't mind that. But for her to point that out, I think for her not to point it out would be malpractice on her part. And we'll have to see if this is what's most effective here at the end. And if it's not, President Trump will be elected. But if it is, she'll be elected herself. All right. If calling Trump a meanie is all they've got, the close of this uh this campaign, it's over, guys. I'll tell you that right. It's over. And I, I think it frankly, I think it's over because of the way you've just seen the voters just a shift. Everybody the tone has shifted. Um, that whole honeymoon phase has it's fizzled out, and now we're seeing what she truly is, or they are, because we already knew from the jump, but now they're seeing who she truly is. Uh, Greg, do you agree that she needs to take a day off to study, to tell the American people or ask them, do you want four more years of Donald Trump? She hasn't figured that one out yet. First off, Judge, your hair looks amazing. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> it looks amazing. So smart. No, yeah. it's true. Liz Cheney, however, she looks like a sad show dog. Oh, Did you, you see her up there? talk about her? She, no, she, you know, she just looked absolutely miserable. She was hoping to have her dad's heart at that point. Look, Kamala can't speak off the cuff. She can't even speak on the cuff. If you stapled <laughs> note cards to her, her cuff, she'd still be a flurry of poetry magnets. She's terrible. And she had the edge of being there with Maria Shriver. They both have a lot in common, a shared hatred of nannies. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold's nanny wasn't even a looker, but he had the baby. And now Joseph is a successful yeah, fitness yes. model on the cover of Men's Health, who also appeared on Dancing with the Stars. But you would never know that if he wasn't born. One of those weird things we don't talk about. Uh, there's a conflict going on between stigma the stigmatizer 
and the normalizer. The, the stigmatizing always increases. He's a threat to democracy. He's like Hitler, which we saw again this week, even though he was almost murdered because of that three months ago. As it's becoming socially cheaper to it, vote for Trump, that's the normalization. You're going to see more and more stigma, stigmatization. Admitting you voted for Trump four years ago could have been deadly. But because of notable people like Musk and Tulsi and RFK, the message to everyone else is the coast is getting clearer. The mm. cost is getting lower. And as that cost to endorse Trump gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, you're going to see this stigmatizing force get more and more intense. Now, you look at like her endorsements, Lizzo, Stevie Wonder, Ben Stiller. It doesn't move the needle at all because there was no social stigma attached to her in the first place. So it comes off as predictable, lame and cowardly. So I don't know where I'm going to go with this, except to end on a positive note that, Judge, your hair looks great. <laughs> Yo, there we have it, guys. One of the rare times we'll see one of the folks on the left actually being real with their candidate, where we've seen Harold Ford Jr. flat out saying, hey, I don't know if that day off was the right move to make for the Harris Walls campaign. It just seems like old Joe back in her spot. I mean, this dude was taking days off left and right. Is this the same thing we're going to? We're going to get the same thing with her. So we got with Joe Biden. Biden's day off here, vacation, beach this and beach that. I mean, it just seems like the guy was never in office. And with that day off, she seems to be following right in old Joe's footsteps. You know, there is no new way for it. Definitely hop in the comment section, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy more content like this, catch you guys on the next one. We got it.